Alrighty folks, it is CPI day. We got to talk about housing expectations. We should talk about Cody, Denzel, and Justin. But before we get started, yes, I'm wearing my swing in a miss shirt. If you don't know what this means, this is a shirt I put on when I put out an expectation and I was clearly wrong. I believe more and more YouTubers and economists and everyone who makes predictions, I believe the world would be a better place and maybe some angels would get their wings if people would admit their mistakes instead of deleting videos, glossing over, double speak. Hey, if you called something and got it right, celebrate. If you called something and got it wrong, just admit it, move on, learn from it, have some fun. So, if you don't know what I called, I called headline 2.9%. I expected shelter inflation and maybe energy to be even a larger drag on the headline reading. And it didn't just, it, it didn't happen. Headline reading came in a year on year at 3.1%. It is still down from last month of 3.2%. So the trend is intact. I do want to highlight right now, right now, that next month we could get a slight bump. Why do I say that so early? It is that base effect. The base effect next month is essentially flat. So if we get a 0.1 or 0.2, that will be above the zero that we reported last year. So I'm calling it early. I'm letting you know early. It's still, you know, it, we'll see. We still have a long way to go, but there is, there is a chance that next month, because of the base effect and how the math works, we do get a slight bump. But good news, the next month is quite a big one, and that is the month. What will that be? What month are we in? We're in December, so that was November, December, January. So when the report comes out in February for January, that might be the month that we finally break three Alrighty, folks, so that was headline core came in as expected at 4%. Uh, month on month headline was at 0.1, month on month core was at 0.3. So the experts are getting more accurate. One of the things to understand is as the experts get better, if they get better at their predictions, it means the economy is starting to behave as expected. We aren't getting these shocks or surprises. So at the end of the day, the numbers coming in as expected, other than maybe uh, the month on month number, which was expected to be zero, it came in at 0.1. You know, we can call three out of four, not bad. But again, I missed it. I was wrong. I own it. There you go. You can laugh at me and we can move on. Let's talk about Fed Day, Fed Day, Fed Day, Fed Day. Three things that we normally watch. Did we get a rate increase or a pause? Come on, we all know a pause is coming. Number two, will we get <coughs> a hawkish or dovish statement, right? The prepared remarks. I generally expect the report to kind of be like last month. Hey, we're data dependent. One month doesn't make a trend. We're not thinking about thinking about cutting. Kind of that nonsense. The action in the fire will be in the Q&A. In the Q&A, in my opinion, it's where Powell goes on his own. The statement is a collective statement. Powell in front of the microphone for the 30 minute Q&A, that's where we could get some market moves and I expect him to be asked a dozen times, are rate cuts coming, are rate cuts coming? Can we have rate cuts in six months, nine months? He's gonna be asked in dozens of different ways. So again, uh, we will be looking for that tomorrow. So uh, pay attention to that. That comes out, I think it happens at 11 or 11. I think the statement comes out at 11 and the news conference is at 1130. These are Pacific times uh, tomorrow. So it should be fun to talk about on Thursday. Folks, that, uh, that series that Millennial Mike referenced about talking to new investors has been a lot of fun for me to do. Uh, we have, uh, we recorded three yesterday. Uh, Cody's uh, video went live yesterday at five o'clock. Uh, Denzel, a uh, great story, goes live today at nine o'clock. 
And Justin, another great story, goes live today at 11 o'clock. These new investor series are amazing. From memory, Denzel is a licensed real estate agent. Him and his wife talk money all the time. Uh, they got into a wonderful house hack duplex and have since bought a single family home. I'm going from memory, so I might be off on the details. And then we have Justin. Boy, Justin is just blowing up in Kentucky. Uh, you're going to want to hear that story. I think he started at 26 and he's got 16 units by 16 or 18. I forget. You're going to have to watch the story, but he's going to tell you about fourplexes and duplexes and all the different ways he's got it done. You're going to want to listen to Denzel and Justin. And of course, Cody, Cody's presentation or video came out yesterday. What a wonderful story. And we have three more interviews scheduled today. So you guys are showing up. You're showing why one rental at a time works. Uh, I am so encouraged by how you all are doing. For example, Cody, if you watched that video, he gave you a wonderful way to find off-market deals. He calls for rent signs. How about that for a little gold nugget? Go watch the video. Cody gives you more and more stuff. How about some housing expectations? We are starting to get forecasts, expectations, guesses, both for prices and transactions. Uh, let me give you some numbers here. Uh, let's do let's do Resi Club first. Good old Lance Lambert at Resi Club. This is according to Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is talking transactions in this estimate. Pay attention to this, transactions, transactions. That is where the recession, that is where the depression happened. So, for 2024, no, yeah, 2024, expectation, 3.83 million. Woo! 3.83 million. Why is that important? Folks, you should watch the video where Ty and I talk about our 2023 <coughs> look back and our 2024 expectations. There was a lot of discussion in there about right-sizing your business. <coughs> So again, Goldman Sachs calling 3.83 million transactions. That's existing home sales. 2025, they expect that to rise to 4.2 million. 2026, 4.3 million. And then finally, in 2027, we are back to 5 million. Folks, remember, I think it was 2022, we did 6.1 million, I think. Maybe it was 5.8, something like that. So four years from now, we are still just at 5 million, according to Goldman Sachs. I got to tell you, I like a lot of these numbers. I think that, yeah, no, I like a lot of these numbers. I think, you know, one and a half does the other. Again, you've, you've been hearing me for a while now saying we are going to be flat for a while. I think 3.79 is the bottom. Uh, so again, that is on transactions. But hey, you guys don't care about transactions, do you? You care about price. Price, price, price. So this is, uh, I got this from Steve Harney. Steve Harney is a great follow on X, AKA Twitter. Uh, he is constantly putting out real estate numbers. He collected some housing expectations. So home prices, 2024 expectation plus 2.3%. How about 2025 plus 2.7%. All right, what about 2026? 3.6%, 2027, 4%, and finally 20, all the way out to 2028. Man, my crystal ball is broken about tomorrow and we got people calling 2028 already. Brave souls. 2028, 4.1%. What does this all mean? Not a negative number amongst them. This is of course, median home price for the country your buy box, your city, your state may be different. But again, what's the latest crash bro? Silver tsunami, something like that. Again, according to the experts, as opposed to the doomers and clickbait folks, uh, not a negative number expected 2024 through 2028. And again, transactions where the collapse, the crash happened, a very slow uptick out, not getting back to 5 million until 2027. Alrighty, folks, remember we talked about Broadcom. Broadcom, I think it was on Friday, 
potentially being a signal to tech, right? Remember Broadcom said, hey, enterprise spending is not where it should be. We said, hey, let's see if we get validation from Oracle or is Broadcom have some unique things going on? Well, we got Oracle's report after hours and revenue missed. Expectations for the future quarter missed. Maybe Broadcom is the signal that enterprise spending is finally cracking or slowing down. Yes, folks, it could be a sign of things to come. And then finally, Michael Milken. If you don't know who Michael Milken is, you never heard the name, do yourself a favor, type it in your Google search bar, Michael Milken. He was the king of junk bonds back in the day that did leverage buyouts. He ultimately went to jail. He served his time. He was pardoned by President Trump. He also what runs what's called the Milken Institute. He came out and was interviewed on CNBC and basically said the Fed will move, will not move early. They will likely move late. They know the history of the 1970s. They will not claim victory and they will lean towards moving late. What does that mean? Well, how I translate that is if the market expects them to move in June, they won't. I think he's right. And I think I've called it several times on this channel. I don't see them cutting. I see them holding it until they get 100% validation that inflation is whooped. Again, I do think if they, so if they cut, there's a chance they do it for the restrictive nature as inflation slowly falls. They certainly will cut if a deep recession happens, but right now you've got to admit the data is lining up where a soft landing seems at least as likely as other scenarios. So lots of stuff going on. And folks, I do want to thank you about 100 of you. Yes, folks, 100 of you did me a favor. You did me a solid. You went to my brand new channel, Best of ORAT, stands for one rental at a time. That is a channel where we post one video a day. Yes, one video. Uh, instead of the six videos you get on this channel, they post one video a day. It happened to be the best video that got the most views, so you can go there and watch it. We posted the two-hour masterclass yesterday about out-of-state and out-of-area investing. Uh, I think we need 161. Yes, folks, 161 more of you to go to Best of ORAT and subscribe. In order for me to monetize that channel, I need 1,000 subs. We are 161 away. And we need 1,200 more watch hours. The good news, folks, is I have posted free master classes on that channel. We have posted the one with Dion, Matt, Jason, and now Millennial Mike. So there is plenty of long form content full of free value. So go take a look, take a listen, watch it, subscribe. Help me get a third channel monetized. I would greatly appreciate it. And then finally, the $99 virtual event. I want to thank Coach Carson for putting it out on his Instagram. This is an event you want to get at. The event is sold out, sold out, sold out for in person, but you can still attend virtually. And if you attend virtually, I don't expect you to watch 20 hours straight you will get the video once it is loaded, right? My team is gonna record it. We're gonna chop it up. We're gonna throw it on Teachable and I will give it to everyone who buys a virtual ticket. My expectation is two or three weeks after the event. You wanna get this. Celebrate with us. Watch the Q&A. You are gonna see 15, actually I just did a count. There's 20 people speaking, 20 different people speaking over two days. All millionaires, all go-givers, all there to help you. Sign up today. S seating is limited. You don't want to miss out. Lots of you missed out on the uh, physical event. Don't miss out on the virtual. Uh, it's going to be a sight to see. Thank you. Take care. Have an amazing day. One more time. Swing and a miss. I'll try to do better next time. Bye.